Today's topic was if you're worried about being laid off or if you're really wanting to understand how to become indispensable and valued, this is to help those people who are getting up every morning and on their way to the bathroom going, well, after what day is it, is how do I really shine today? How do I make myself a value to an organization when I feel invisible? Um, how do I know that the company values me? How do I know if the company is going to want me, want to keep me if push comes to shoves and layoffs are imminent due to forces outside our, our control? I mean, right now we're in a really new reality that it's moving pretty fast pace and companies are having to make tougher choices than they've ever made in decades. So with that, let's position ourselves into the best possible situation. So if you're listening to this for yourself or how to guide your team, either way, I wanted you to know that this is designed for those questions. And uh, for those who are with me last week, um, all right, why can't I go to the next screen? Hello, hello screen. Ah, um, if you were with me last week, I basically gave my background, my backgrounds in a senior HR, uh, certifications. I've done HR for over 20 plus years and now I'm an executive coach because I work with a lot of executives and can I can understand, help them understand what it's like to know the results seeing a team with a bad boss versus a good boss. But more importantly than that, I've actually worked virtually myself. Since 2002, I was a geographically displaced employee slash consultant with a company here out of DC and my husband was mil active military. So we were continually moving and they were just so wonderful to keep me on. Um, after that, I started working for virtual companies. Not that I went out and looked for them, but those were the opportunities where I was able to step in and use my talent. So I've actually gotten to see how some companies do it, meh, and other companies just knock it out of the park. And what I took away from all of those experiences was really understanding how we have to do virtual different. So again, sometimes you feel very invisible in this virtual world. Unless you're on screen with somebody, it's easy for you to mentally think you're being forgotten. So if you're ever in a place where that has, that thoughts just floated through your brain, this, uh, the tips today are to help you get through that. So again, if you get up every morning wondering how to shine, be relevant, be valued, or just know if you've got marketable talent or should you be looking, we have a tendency to go internal for some of these solutions. We'll pick a training, we'll pick up a book, we'll talk to a friend, we'll talk to those people we trust. And I'm here to let you know that we're gonna kind of give you a different silver bullet approach. Because the secret is not to go internal, the secret is actually to go external. And what I mean by that is, the real way to solve this problem is to include others that experience working with you firsthand. Because when you start to get an inkling that there might be a problem, that is the perfect space for creativity. So when I talk about including others, there are some things we have to take care of you first. And there are two things I'm gonna bring up before we kind of jump into how to include others to solve this problem of working in the virtual world. The first is understanding that to keep your sanity, to keep your health, you're gonna to have to include smiling and gratitude every day. I want you to think of smiling as toilet paper. It is required. There should be a run on it. We have so many muscles in our face that it's scientifically proven that just by using a smile, we create endorphins like we're working out. It is basic, it is natural, and even blind babies will smile and turn towards the human voice. In a study of baseball players, they actually took hundreds of baseball player baseball cards and sorted them into two piles, those who did not smile during their photo and those that were smiling on their photo. And they actually looked at their longevity. And the people who were smiling in their baseball cards simply lived over nine years longer on average than those who did not. So smiling actually, and of course that led to other research, it's not just based on that, um, but it actually does lengthen your life. With the endorphins that smiling gives your brain, 
they actually found it was more potent than 2,000 bars of chocolate, which I would gladly eat during this time, but not in one day. And this is actually what they found to be more endorphins than 2,000 chocolate bars a day. Um, there was a couple I met two years ago that were on their honeymoon chose to literally take all the money and go backpack around the world to go work at NGOs, which are non-government funded um, help organizations in other countries. And I asked him, how did you handle the language barrier? And he says, you know, the best translator I had was my smile. Smiling is cultural universal. It is a way to offer connection that no other body part, no other word can. So it uh, is an interesting way to just connect, but you have to practice smiling before you get on screen. That's the new twist in the virtual world. You have to literally smile, practice smiling, loosening up your face like you're an athlete so that you smile more easily on screen. They also found in all the science that if you were to look at somebody smiling and smile just like them, you had a higher percentage rate of assessing their mood than if they weren't smiling or if you were not smiling and just guessed. So there's this natural connection through a smile. But more importantly, it helps you perceive that you are absolutely competent and more confident just because you're easy at smiling. In research studies of interviewing candidates, those who smiled the most were deemed more competent, even though you could look at their resumes and clearly see they weren't, but that was a perception. And that's a really important perception right now in the virtual world when you are only getting your upper half to communicate with people, you're gonna have to smile and smile intentionally and practice it and ease into it and understand that maybe take a tip from the fact that you can wear pajama bottoms to work, half comfort, half business, let the smile and relax a little bit because the virtual world is causing us all to kind of take the grace of relaxation into a new reality. And smiling will help the other person on the other side of the screen feel more confident, confident and at ease if you're smiling. The second is gratitude. We're all capable of it. Um, we all have the ability to use it, but we've scientifically found that it helps us assess what's going right. It grounds us, it gives us resilience, and it balances out the negativity. Uh, one of the actors has just started on Facebook, the Some Good News, SGN, and uh, is it John? It's the guy who does Jack Ryan the show Jack Ryan, his wife did the Mary Poppins too, or returns. And he does a brilliant job of kind of balancing out the bad. And I was like, I think this should be on television, like right after the news, just to help us understand where to put our gratitude right now so we can handle the weird stuff that's coming. It also increases our life satisfaction overall. If we can just get up every day and go, what am I grateful for? I have had people come to me like, I don't, I don't know how you do that. I don't, I don't have anything to be grateful for. I'm like, you're not dead. Start somewhere. You're alive. I'm grateful for that. And I don't want to be corny or marginalize this. Gratitude truly is a scientific gift you can give your brain because only when you're grateful can you start to breathe and look at creative ways to solve the new issues we have now. So on that note, I wanted to step into the topics today. And I'm going to help us understand how to, um, how to understand, oh, thank you, John Krasinski. <laughs> Thanks, Terry, that name. Um, and I'm going to step into how to evaluate, gather, offer, and learn. And what I mean by that is when you want to understand how to be your best and how to step in and understand your value so that you can become dispensable, indispensable, not dispensable, whew, indispensable for your company. Even if layoffs have to occur, you want them to be the first person. They want you to be the, you want them, no, I've been talking a little bit too long today, been several webinars. You want them to think of you as the first person they call back. 
You knew what I meant. So evaluate. And here I work with people and I'm like, let's get real. How can you do better? Can you do better? And I'm not talking about doing more than you already do, you already did if you were in the physical office. Now we're in a new better realm. To get a clear picture of how you are evaluated by your boss is a great place to start. And we're gonna evaluate that. But you wanna ask your ask of them with the intention of the interest and the success of the team. First, you wanna get a clear picture of what you're already doing right. And I mean, literally email, call, video. I have two questions for you. I really wanna be of value to my team. I wanna be of value to you, but first I need to know what I'm already doing right so I can honor it, not negate it, and not assume something else is more important. Next is where can I step up and be the most helpful now? Now, these are not questions that they get every day. It's not questions you've asked every day. And if it is, kudos. If they're used to you asking you, they'll be ready to answer it. But a lot of them are at home in their own mess. They might have kids crawling all over them. They might have pets. They might have had to move their elder parents back in with them because the nursing home closed. We do not know what struggles each of us has now. We are in a new reality of getting to know people for how human they are. So asking your boss what you're doing right is a great conversation, an easy conversation for them to have. The next question, how can you help more or step up? They may not have the answer yet, but keep asking. Not in a brown, nosy and you know aggravating way, but hey, I'll come back Monday and ask the same question. It'll help their subconscious start to work. And when things bubble up, which they will, they'll go, ah, oh, I can think of that person. Great. But how to do this is a little bit confusing for people. Learning how to ask should be become your new superpower because nobody's going to know what you want. Nobody knows what you're capable of or that you have space for unless you tell them. And a lot of times we don't know really how to tell them, or if we tell them, we don't know how it lands. So one of the best ways you can um, use your influence is to ask. And what I mean by that is knowing why ask should be your new superpower, because asking good questions, and, we're, and I'll share that with you, will make you visible. It'll help connect you to your boss and your coworker. It'll also kind of give you some realistic insights and examples that automatically turn into information you can act upon. And it'll help you grow. By asking that question of what you're already doing right, you'll understand what to honor and hold fast as your current value. So now you know where to add value. So when I tell people to ask people outside their trusted bubble, if you can just go to the chat box and kind of share with me what feelings bubble up for you, that may help me explain the next part a little bit better. Because sharing how to ask is actually a little more important than just what to ask. Because once you understand how, you'll understand how to shape what to ask. And I've already kind of shared what you need to ask first is what are you doing right? And they may still be gathering that intel in their own brain because they're trying to figure out what right means for them. But trust me, when you ask that of somebody who watches your work, they'll be able to tell you pretty fast what you're, what you're known for doing right. So um, the next part is how to ask. And this is the best way I have found that works magic is state the context which we're in a new virtual world. This is our new contact. We're all having to work differently. The team's dispersed. Then, you, so you set that context and you ask the question, I really wanna know what I'm, I'm doing right so that I know not to shove that aside when problems come down the pipeline that I think are more important. And let them have space to answer. And when they answer, say, that's awesome. Thanks for the information. Can you give me an example of how you see that? And this is the most important part of this equation because now you get to see how they see you. 
I did this once with uh, a coworker. And I was like, you know, I'm only in here, you know, half of every day because I was working at a, a, a different shift than her and we overlapped. I said, can you tell me what I'm doing right when I come in and need to step in or what I'm doing right before I leave? And she was like, oh, I had, hadn't thought about it. She gets, I'll get back with you. She came back. So you know, I let that kind of lay. She says, you know, when you come in, it's great. You come in, you're very happy. It gives us a boost of positivity. You sit down, you kind of ask questions, you get to work. But more importantly, when you leave, everything is, you know, in its place. And I know, and I, I really have come to rely on that from you. And I would have never assumed that that was something that she valued because I thought that she valued something I did with her before she left for the day, not what I set up for her the next morning. And it gave me a whole different perspective of how she viewed our working relationship. So that was really interesting. So yeah, I never uh, deviated from doing those for her. And I was able to then ask questions, well, how can I up my game with you while you're here? And that blossomed into a beautiful conversation. So when you ask for some examples, ask for the answer and then ask for examples, it gives you an entirely new perspective on how other people see you. And this is what a lot of people don't even give themselves time to do. Now is the time to set your set aside time to do that with people that you've worked with in the past, you work with now, who are your supervisors now. However, you need to reach out for those people to get a really good idea of what your strengths are, what you're doing right, anything that you wanna learn. And if you have any questions, pop them in the chat room at any time. The second one today is gather. We want you to gather intel. We want you to gather people, but under the circumstances, now's a good time to gather intel. Connect with your boss. You really need to start understanding what excellence looks like from their point of view, because you're gonna understand how they assess your value. So this ask is in this new reality, in the work I can provide you, what does excellence look like? And they may come back and just like, just that it's done. Okay, you know that that answer came because they're, they must have pressure from somewhere else. Because who doesn't wanna tell you exactly what excellence look like, looks like? Sometimes they have to unpack it. But when they do, you can also ask, or different question, can you give me an example of how you recognize it? How do you know that I've done that job? It may not be a direct to them. It may be because, oh, well, Martha over here is able to turn this in, which I know then you got the information to her, or, or there are no complaints on IT. Whatever it is, can you give me an example of how you recognize it is a question that allows them to verbalize it. And the fact that you need to hear them verbalize it is kind of an important part of the puzzle. Otherwise, you're assuming. Can you help me better understand the connections? from what I deliver and who it helps. It's, sometimes it's that, how does my work affect the big picture of the organization question? All three of these don't have to be asked at once because they're gonna go, wow, what's going on? But this is your way of tapping in, connecting with a boss on a regular basis, gathering intel. You can ask what excellence look like anytime that they ask something new of you. If they've given you something to help on, Say, perfect, got it, I'll I'll, I'm going for it. But before I do, give me an idea of what excellence looks like when I get this done. And for them, this may be the best question you can ask them because now they get the time to formulate what does it look like? What will be awesome? Because now you're actually making the boss look good. Because if the boss has to tell you what excellence looks like, now they can define it for their superior as well. Can you give me an example of how you recognize it next time they give you something? Any of these can be used. I'm not, these are not things I'm forcing down your throat. These are examples of what's been used successfully before. But to be genuinely interested in how your work is helping the team look great is where you need to come from. So I've kind of positioned these in goal, what the ask is with the intention, so that you come at it with the right frame of mind. So therefore it's easy inflection of your voice. It's a genuine, authentic question 
it's not masking some other weird desire. But when we talk about gathering intel, this is when a professional journal becomes critical. I brought up a professional journal last week as a way of just stepping in to identifying everything you do during the day. But now in this new reality, you need to evaluate really what's getting done. And this will allow you to really understand what you need to keep track of. It will allow you to have a, a, a written visual of all that you've done that day. It'll also allow you to provide this information to your boss. It's something you can ask your team to do. Your coworkers, if, you're, if you have a boss, but yet you're leading another team, hey, every Friday, can you just zip me an email of what you've gotten done this week and what went right and what challenges and then what's next, whatever it is you wanna ask. But it, this helps you understand all you actually do get done. Um, I was on a conversation today with a 30 year old office manager of a construction company. Construction is still deemed an essential business, but she's literally having to work from home four out of the five days, maybe go in to work on payroll when no one else is there. And I asked her, have you been doing a professional journal? And she was, yeah, I started two weeks ago. And I think I do more in less time because I'm not interrupted, but yet I still feel very um, harried. Like the boss, everybody thinks they could just text me all the time now instead of in business hours. And that's when we talked about, you know, well, have you thought about putting boundaries back on? Like I am available during the workday, but just because I'm, you're, we're all virtual doesn't mean you have me 24 seven. And she really had to bring in the boss and she was able to really look at her um, accomplishments every day. And when a conversation came up, like with the boss made a comment, like, well, I don't, I don't even know, you know, if you're working, she's like, I'll send you an email. Here's all the things that I've done, how much time I spent on them. And he was blown away. So this allows you to kind of keep track and surprise yourself with how much you are getting done or recognizing what's getting in the way. Sometimes understanding the challenges that are getting in the way help you make different choices right now and carve out different time and set different boundaries. And we're all in this, you're not alone in the struggle of, Ugh, how does this work? This is when we connect with other people and have conversations. So when I talk about gathering intel, write it in a pro professional journal and keep that intel and then start to link it with what you're getting done with that intel as well. Um, before I go any further, the next two, what's coming up for anybody right now? Um, you can unmute, you can, you know, jump in the chat room. What questions or what thoughts do you have right now that are bubbling up? And if you're if you're talking, I can't hear you yet. If you if you haven't unmuted, <laughs> I'm notorious for that. For me, I don't um, keep a professional journal. It's more like uh, because of, uh, I'm in IT. Um, I have days where my days are spent uh, trying to put out fires. Uh, and yeah. other days where I'm trying to make sure that fires don't pop up. I, when people say, because my title is, you know, director of enterprise systems and people are like, well, what is that? What does that mean? So I'm like, really, I'm a fireman. I'm either putting out fires or trying to keep them from starting. Um, but the way my, my calendar, my email flow is, it's like at any given moment, you know, I can, can, uh, you know, when I meet with my boss or whatever, kind of stay on top of it that way. Um, I'm not saying that it wouldn't, you know, be beneficial for me to, to, to write it down, but kind of because of my position, it's kind of done for me through the uh, tools that we use uh, day in and day out, whether it be, you know, Salesforce or our ticketing system or, you know, those sorts of things. So I think you're, you know, I would have to say that right now we're starting to realize how far IT people are ahead of the rest <laughs> You, you naturally have this. doesn't feel that way, Carol. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, okay. In some areas, you know, they're really ahead of us. Um, because like you said, you've got this running tally of things you've been able to, the fires you've been able to put out, 
fires you've been able to prevent. Um, a lot of us have this really weird email trail, but a lot of times it doesn't have a, a nice bow around it. Like, yeah, that got done. And we don't, there are some people who have magically figured out how to organize all their emails that it goes off into these pockets. They can pull it up and say, oh yeah, here it is. I aspire to that. I have not gotten there yet. Um, but for those who don't have that amazing um, track record or who aren't the fire firemen, you know, they, they are in the middle of the mix. They're part of the recipe for the great cake. They forget to give themselves credit for what part they play. And so not for everybody, but for a lot of people, just sitting down and writing it down surprises them with how much they do get done when they, they're so natural at doing what they do. So you're right, Terry, that I think there's all sorts of ways to gather and keep hold of what you do. And what we're trying to do is prevent what's called the recency effect whenever someone wants to sit down with you and talk about performance, is they only remember just the most recent events, good or bad, and you're trying to bring the whole year or the whole segment of time into focus. And sometimes just having those lists of everything you got done or having that trail of emails once a week to the boss of, hey, here's what got done this week. Here's who um, I connected with, or here's the challenges that came up. Here's what's set for next week. It's just such a great way to keep you positively positioned in the eyes of others. Um, but I really appreciate you reminding us that for people in your position, especially those people who are putting out fires or preventing fires in your case, mostly, it's a brilliant visual. And I think that's what we're going for. We're trying to create some form of a brilliant visual and you're ahead of us. Well, I, I think that's the only time anybody has ever used brilliant and my name in the same sentence. So I appreciate it. Thank you. You might be surprised if you start asking. I'm just saying. Um, Maybe so. <laughs> anybody else before I move forward? Because I'm happy to kind of unpack this a little bit more. I was just going to say that I, I don't do this on a regular basis, but I have from time to time and it's so helpful and it encourages me usually to see oh my goodness i really am accomplishing things i'm getting good work done <laughs> you know times where you uh, maybe feel stressed out or that you're busy all day but you don't know what you did kind of thing it's it's very helpful and i i want to you know um give props to that statement very helpful because like right now even though we're all quarantined, I would, I would bet a winning bet that if we were to all sit down and make that list of all that we learned every day, you'd be amazed between the laws changing and how people are being helpful or what we could do better, God forbid, another virus. We are just engulfing new information. If you were to sit down, like, here's what I got done today or learned, I think we're going to look back in time going, holy smokes, how did I find time to worry? How did I, how did I find time? Um, we're, we're pretty amazing um, specimens, this human brain. But it is a way to allow you to really give yourself credit. Big props. I like that you yeah. included to uh, things we learned that day, because especially for, for me, I'm working a little bit more now, but for the first couple of weeks, I wasn't really working that much, but I was busy. And so maybe I'll just say I was busy learning. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, if you were to sit down and, and say all you've learned about the new technologies, about loans about how to adapt about who's stepping up it's a pretty impressive list if you and when i say professional journal sometimes it's it's helpful for us to keep it in a professional context because all these things that we are learning we can actually take these skills and transfer them into a workplace and sometimes we just forget to give ourselves credit for something that we do so naturally so easily or the fact that we think everybody else is doing it too they're not and we all do it uniquely. 
So thanks for offering that because I know the first two weeks were probably more scary than the following weeks. We're getting a little, we adapt very quickly. What we adapt to though is what we're trying to steer into a positive zone of growth. And, and that's why when I got the opportunity, I was like, I'm just going to put these webinars out there now because I think we're wanting positive ways to use our talents. So I'm going to move to the next one then. Thanks for that. So this next one is offer. Uh, one of, this is a concept that's a leadership concept of, of shifting from receiving to giving. And what that does is that it actually fuels different neurons in your brain. So if you wait around just to receive work, now we're going to want you to twist and say, and you're going to offer to work. Because if you had the choice to have a job or not a job, you'd choose a job. If you have a job, now I need you to go after, after offering to work. It's a different mindset. It's just shifting your perspective. A lot of times we'll wait around, we'll check our email, we'll drum our fingers like, well, I've reached out Monday. It's now Wednesday. I haven't heard anything. Must not have anything. Oh, no. Not in the virtual world. In a virtual world, it's no different than the squeaky wheel gets the oil. But we need to do it with the intention of being helpful. To become more valuable than before and seen as indispensable need, means you need to be part of the oil that gets rid of all the other creeks in the wheel. So this is all with the intention of learning how to excel now and when you get back in the office. There are some people who are going to see this recording and going, well, I've already been laid off. I don't know if I'm going to get called back. You don't. But what we can do is shift from what you used to do to what you can do now and maybe look for new opportunities and have options if they do get to call you back. But I want you to start asking what else is possible. And this is a great question, um, especially in the morning when you're practicing your smiling, which is kind of funny. So I, I look, we all, we all have a phone, right? We call it phone face, but if you can just smile, at your phone like you're listening to a joke or comedian it's a good place to practice people don't question anymore we used to we used to think you were crazy now we just know you're normal so do practice sm smiling and gratitude but now ask yourself what else is possible and take that intention to work what more does my team need for me what can i offer to my coworkers and leaders what will help the current situation you know, there is a company I worked for that was a online virtual learning platform company, and they sold coaching services for those people who wanted to build online learning virtual programs. So they were ahead of their time. They've been doing it for many years. And they had built in great ways to ha help have people step up and offer more. And some people are very creative. Some people are not. Some people could do data analysis. Some people were just the people who loved to connect. So they actually would, there was one person who stepped up and since there was so much virtual work, it was entirely virtual for over three countries. Every Monday, we knew that somebody had made a compilation of all the bloopers that had happened during all the video meetings. Somebody's dog barked, somebody's cat walked across the keys. Somebody spilled their coffee. Somebody stood up and they were wearing their bathing suit. All of the bloopers would get compiled every Monday. So this is the time when it doesn't have to be so serious that you can actually step up and be the glue for your team, to be the glue they look forward to hearing from. Somebody else was responsible for throwback Thursdays on their Slack channel and they would throw up elementary school pictures, which we all just love immensely, or any photo from your past that kind of showed a glimpse that you could talk about at the next week's meeting. They picked one like, okay, we gotta know more about this picture. And so there were different ways to show up and do more, offer more in the name of work, because work is also your organizational culture, how you, keep people belonging to your virtual family. And there is a point now that you might need to step up and say, how can I bring the team together? Who can I call for you? Anything that you can do, it's now from just, I need you to move from receiving and waiting for work to asking for it, offering to work 
and look at opportunities in all forms of what you can do really well or what you know is available now virtually more than we've ever had this opportunity before. So you can be creative and fun. When I talk about offering, one of the ways to offer is to use what we call appreciative inquiry. Um, appreciative inquiry and working in your strengths. So appreciative inquiry is actually a science-based approach that was really cultivated when we had a lot of culture implosion when companies merged. You had two companies coming in, both with their cultures, a lot of redundancy, a lot of layoffs, a lot of mistrust, a lot of insecurities. And what they found is, is consultants would come in with this concept of appreciative inquiry and they would sit down and say, okay, first of all, what's going right? So in the beginning of this, I said, one of the things you need to find out from your boss is what are you doing right? Or coworkers, hey, what am I doing right? And it's an odd question. We're used to telling everybody what they're doing wrong. But when you ask that question, it causes the brain to shift and it actually changes the chemicals. And when you are looking at what's going right, suddenly you're starting to envision what it took for that to be right. All the activity, the collaboration, what you did, what other people did. And it actually triggers the good endorphins. It lessens the stress and anxiety. And it actually helps you step into problem solving faster. So when you're actually offering to work more, or work differently, and they go, oh, I would love for you to do this and this and this. And they said, okay, before I do that, what's going right? So we know to honor it. So when I step into doing that, I'm not gonna disrupt anybody else's cups of coffee. That's a great conversation because now they're, they're gonna look at it very, well, here's what's going right, this, this, this. And now you know exactly what more they're talking about. The other side of that is, Knowing your strengths, uh, some people do strength finders. I know several on the people in this call have done it, but if you have never done an assessment, you also can ask what other people feel your strengths are at work. Ask for what they feel your best strength is and how they see it. Again, state context. I'd like to know how to do my work better. Can you give me an idea of what you see as one of my strengths? And can you give me an example of when you see that in action? Is a really great way to see how other people see you positively and you know how to keep showing up for them. But it helps you recognize why and how the right environments work for you as well, and maybe not others. So when you are just waiting for work, and now we're having you shift to asking where you can help more, do make sure you're asking to do work that you're good at and you're comfortable and you can shine in. If somebody said, oh, I need you to redo that Excel program, I would go, oh, I am so not your person. Love ya, and I know I asked for more work, but I can't do that to the specifications that even I know are required. Let me find somebody on the team who has space. I'm, I'm happy to connect the right person. Let me get back with you and I'll be that person who connects you. And then you can tell me what else I can help with, but know your boundaries for sure. But knowing your strengths help you appreciate yourself and it builds your empathy for the differences of others. So when we talk about shifting from receiving work to giving, it's the offering and the intention that needs to be there with authentic authenticity. We've heard often that you can't, you know, instead of going after what you want by yourself, if you take the time to look at giving everybody else what they want, you'll not automatically give it. This is what I mean by going out and asking. Asking what's going right and asking where your strengths are will help you understand where they're coming from and how to help them much faster than just guessing or assuming you know. This new virtual reality, literally, <laughs> is allowing us to be new open books with each other and work more human and step in and ask more human questions. And we now have the grace that people are willing to open up and share with us more about their humanness because under stress is when our true colors can shine. Hopefully the right ones shine. <laughs> Sometimes they don't, we all have a bad day. But assuming noble intent and that everybody gets up to do their best will really help your conversations be a whole lot more positive. Last but not least, to learn. What are the smartest things you can do every day? We've already talked about smiling and gratitude, but you need to understand what others need from you every day. 
they may actually look forward to your smile. They may actually look forward to you asking them what's going right because it, it helps them shift. But here are the asks that you can actually build into your day. How can I be of more service every day to you? And the boss may say, I am so grateful that you're the first person in every meeting. Or I am grateful that when you come to the meeting, regardless of when you show up, you're there to help me get through the questions. Or whatever it is, take it. Understand what it means to them. You always can ask for examples. But let's say somebody says, you know what? I just need you to be creative and help us understand how to work better. What are the boundaries of creativity I can play in? Meaning, how far can I go with this? And it's a, it's a legit answer. It's a legit question. Because they're like, well, don't do something where we have to get up and you know, show what we're wearing. But can you throw in a, a fun quiz every day? They'll give you an idea if you just ask. Um, you need to have the intention to identify how to help everyone be their best, but for you to be more visible to everyone. Because what you really want to see happening is you really want, I'm going to go back here, you really want them to say, you know, who helped me the most was Tracy, who helped me the most was Terry, who helped me the most was Bridget. You, know, you really want them to say, wow, you know, they stepped up. They were the first ones in that said, hey, what can I do? How can I be more of more service? How can I help? It's, I'm not asking you to martyr yourself. Let's just back up and be really clear here. I want you to stay within your zone of expertise and genius. But now's the time to be a little bit more fluid and see where you can fill in the gaps and imagine what else is possible in your job. We don't know if it's gonna be exactly the same when you go back. I doubt it will. There'll be some things we resort to out of comfort, but there'll be new things that we embrace, such as um, more working from home if we need to, for health, for care of others, for adapting back into the office. We have no idea what the future holds with any organization right now, but we can dream, and we can be optimistic. So to make sure you, shine at work or value at work and increase your marketability so that you have more choices or in case a layoff is imminent under no control of your own. I want you to first be really clear of what you want and ask yourself if every day you're doing something that moves you closer to the future you want. If you suddenly wake up and because you're without that family in person every day at the office, and you realize you absolutely hate what you do, or there's no challenge in it anymore. We're gonna be grateful for what we have right now if you have it for those who have it. But let's get really real about where to pivot and where your next challenge can come from because this is the time to dream a little bit. If you want to stay at your current company, get asked back if layoffs happen, or just build great referrals from coworkers and bosses, now is the time to shine more than ever. And if you are in a particular position where you have a lot more time on your hands, now's the time to step into to potentially offering services to other people in different industries and different organizations, if you have the time. A lot of people don't, but if you do, hey, how can I be of help? I've got more time on my hands. I am working, but I've got more time on my hands. How can I be helpful? Build this network in a positive way. Does anybody have any questions? Because this is one of those um, times when I've offered quite a few tips. Some are sinking in and some are like still bubbling and floating. What's hitting home the most for everybody right now? Tracy, is there anything popping up for you? Well, I would say a lot of it. I love the last question. Really ask yourself if what you're doing today is getting you closer to where you want to be tomorrow. Um, as you know, Carol, but I was laid off in June 
and then in November, I guess, I started working um, just on a contract basis, kind of part-time temporary. And actually, just right before this call, I got an email saying, hey, we want to put you on the payroll. So, um, I don't know, I'm just giving that background to say, this has been helpful for me um, to, I'm still evaluating kind of where I want to be and um, trying to make sure that I am being indispensable and, and working within my strengths. So it's kind of been a process over the last several months and it's just, it's exciting. So I'm enjoying the whole process. Well, and congratulations for the email. Oh, thank um, you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it was kind of shocking, actually. <laughs> so I haven't been doing really, I would say, hardly any work at all, as I mentioned, for the last three weeks and um, then got that email today. So anyway, it's, it's nice, definitely. We are at an interesting crossroads because there are organizations that we're struggling to find really qualified talent that are looking at this opportunity and they're looking to hire. They're like, hey, there are people laid off. Now's the time that we might actually get the right talent we need that weren't even looking before. So it's been an interesting conversation to have with people who were um, contemplating or weren't looking. I've, they haven't looked in years and suddenly they're like, oh, what do I do now? I'm like, you start looking. So I'm glad that you got that call because there are companies like this is the perfect time to find the right talent that 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 they weren't even looking before so thanks for sharing congratulations oh thank you and i i just want to say also i always appreciate how you talk about asking because i think that's so important and it's it's really not necessarily easy to do i think it's something you really for me personally i have to learn to work on um but I always, from my boss, want that clarification. So there are, there are really, this, the way that, that um, I coach people how to ask is a way that drives the conversation, not just like, hey, you know, just a throwing out an ask. Because when you give the context and you can ask the question, you ask for an example, it's a whole conversation that's not um, common yet. And we were drilled out in early elementary school not to ask questions because they made us look dumb or stupid or they you know it was it's just been drilled in our education system that somehow asking meant weakness and right now asking out of curiosity and intentions and growth mentality is the best way to ask and it's more well received right now than any other time um so thank you for sharing that um and anybody else can you know pop in what i'm gonna do here is remind you that to make sure you shine at work and are valued, you must think of others. Include others in the journey and start asking better questions of others. Because when you do, this is when they say, who is the most awesome? You are the most awesome. Um, because you were curious, uh, you stepped up, you stepped in, you cared and you really kind of went above and beyond in this new opportunity of doing so. Please feel free to have a discovery call with me if you want to chat more about your situation. Uh, talking it out is sometimes the best brainstorming you can ever do with somebody outside an organization. So I'm happy to be of service. And as always, I think you're already amazing. So let's go change the world. <laughs>